Hello YouTube. Today we're making chicken and sausage gumbo. Being born in Louisiana but raised in southeast Texas, we were just across the Louisiana border from all those Cajuns. And you know those Cajuns flow from Louisiana into Texas so we didn't live in Texas, southeast Texas long that mom was taught real fast how to make gumbo and she made gumbo pretty often and we've grown up on it. I'm going to show you how to make gumbo today and be able to can it in jars so you can enjoy it at a future date and not have to cook two gallons of gumbo to be able to enjoy just a little bit. And it also allows you to cook gumbo and still be able to can some up for a future date instead of having to try to put it in your freezer because you always have gumbo left over. We're going to start with about a pound to a pound and a half of chicken breast. You'll cube those into one inch cubes. We're going to place those in a baking pan lined with foil for easy cleanup. Then we're going to take our one pound of sausage links. We're going to use smoked sausage. We'll slice those into half inch rounds. We're going to place that in the oven on 350 degrees. You're going to bake that until they are done. We're going to add four quarts of chicken stock to a, at least an eight quart pot. We're using a three quart pot today. And you're going to bring that to a bowl. Our next step is we're going to season our broth. And what we did to season up our broth for the gumbo is we added a half a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of onion powder. You'll bring that to a boil, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our roux. Your roux is what makes the gumbo look like gravy. And roux is actually made just like gravy. The, the way the roux is made is you use equal parts of oil and flour, and then it is browned on the stove or in the oven until right before it would actually burn and that's original Cajun roux. But they have came up with a roux that is what we call a dry roux and it doesn't have any oil in it so we use 50-50 of it that way we can cut the some of the oil out of our gumbo and kind of lower the calories. We're going to be using two-thirds cup of the dry roux, two-thirds cup of the regular roux you add that to the boiling pot and that's going to need to cook for about 30 minutes. Um, your roux does cook while it's boiling and it will taste different when it gets closer to the 30 minute time period. That's just like how flour cooks in the oven, it's going to cook on the stove boiling. While your gumbo is boiling on the stove and your chicken is cooking in the oven, the reason we're cooking the chicken in the oven is if we boil it on the stove and then boil it in the pressure pot, your chicken's going to be nothing but shreds and mush when it's done in the bottom of the jar. And we want our chicken to still be in chunks and our sausage to still be in chunks. While that's cooking, we're going to get our jars cleaned up. We, I used five quart jars for this recipe today. So we're going to place five lids in a pan, heat them on the stove, you want them heated for 10 to 15 minutes before you use them. Okay, now that our chicken's coming out of the oven, our roux is still cooking on the stove, we're going to divide this chicken and sausage up into these five jars. Also to these five jars, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of Sure Gel. The Sure Gel just kind of keeps everything constituted together and it won't separate as bad in the jar after it's set in the pantry for a couple of months. Next we'll need to taste our gumbo to see if it needs any type of seasonings like salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, or even more red pepper flakes. After you've gotten it seasoned the way that you like it, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add four chopped green onions and one tablespoon of chopped parsley. You'll stir that into the mixture well and then we're going to ladle the hot liquid over into the jars. You'll fill the jars leaving a half inch headspace 
for quartz, you're going to pressure them for 90 minutes on 10 pounds. If it's pints, you'll cook those for 75 minutes on 10 pounds. Please follow your pressure cooker's directions on how to process quartz and pint jars. Also, please follow the directions of your pressure canner on the cool down process after you finish canning. I hope you enjoy the recipe. Give us a thumbs up if you did. Please subscribe to our channel for future videos coming up. Hope you have a great day. This is the Pressured Prepper, and I'm out.